Is this book on clinch fighting for MMA all it's cracked up to be? Hi guys, my name is Joe and welcome to Fighting Words, the martial arts library. On this channel I review martial arts books and talk about other martial arts related subjects. The subject for today's review is Clinch Fighting for Mixed Martial Arts, published in 2006. The authors of this book are Mike Swain and Chuck Jefferson. Uh, Mike Swain is pretty well known in the judo community. You know, he's medaled multiple times at the World Games. He's a four-time Olympian. Uh, he coached the, the 96 team, I believe. And Mr. Jefferson uh, is also a prolific judo practitioner. You know, he's won gold at the Pan Am Games, for instance, and won numerous gold in the Junior Olympics. The thing about this book that stands out the most, compared to what I was expecting, is that the book covers no-gi judo throws. That is the, the MMA that it covers, no-gi judo throws. Uh, the book starts off by showing various clinch positions, uh, as well as how to pummel, and so shows what I would call solo uchikomi for a few selected throws and foot sweeps. So what that means, as far as the, the clinch positions, we get a single photograph and we get a one-line description. <laughs> And they're all sort of massed together and have numbers to them. So you got to look at number one. Number one, which one is that? Uh, for what I'm referring to as the solo uchikomi. Um, basically, these are the body positions you want to find yourself in as you are executing one of the four throws that they actually single out. The rest of the book... For the most part, we get into the techniques, and they are divided by what class of techniques. So, for instance, the first section is on foot trips. In the introductory section of that chapter, it notes that foot trips are safe. In other words, you can go for them without really leaving yourself in a vulnerable position. The author suggests using your sweeps like a boxer would use his jab to sort of, you know, pick at the opponent and create opening. Uh, most of the techniques presented here are going to be variations of kochigari and ochigari. So your leg goes in the middle of your opponent's legs, and if you sweep with the arch of your foot or the sole of your foot, that's a kochigari, that's an inner sweep. And then if you go you know, more of a, a hook with your heel, then that becomes more of an outside sweep, an ochigari, a reap, technically. One MMA-specific thing that comes up in this chapter is that they do show how to use these sweeps when you or your opponent has their back to the wall or the cage. Uh, following that is a chapter on forward throws. So the majority of these are going to be hip throw variations, but we also get like some shoulder throw variations. Um, almost all of them are shown from an underhook position. A few are shown from like a head and arm position. And this is sort of a, a high head into arm position, like, like a high over under, I guess you call it. Uh, it also shows once you hit the mat, you can follow some of these up with arm bars. Uh, in the last chapter, actually, we saw some of the foot sweeps followed up with guard passes. And we do get a little bit of follow up groundwork with some of these. And I'll touch on that when I get to the pros and cons section. Following that is a chapter on leg sweeps. And these are different than the leg trips. Uh, it notes that the sweeps require more precise timing. Most of these are variations of Osorogari and some Sase Surokomiyashi variations. So whereas with the trips, you're basically positioning your leg behind your opponent's leg, for the sweeps, you need to get them moving and then kick their leg out from under them. That seems to be the differentiation that they're making here. Although, frankly, there's a little bit of crossover between those skills. Uh, there's a brief section following that on leg picks. Most of these are knee picks, so it involves, from the clinch, forcing your opponent's upper body in a direction and then, you know, hooking their knee so that they can't step in that direction and you can get a takedown off of that. The next chapter is on pickups. Um, most of these involve a duck under in order to get an entry into this. 
Uh, there are a lot of fireman's carry variations in this. There's also uh, some Tenage variations as well. But yeah, getting underneath the guy and actually lifting him and supporting him on your body and then taking him to the ground after that. Uh, there's a chapter following that on rear takedowns. That is the chapter that has the most variety. So several of these rear takedowns come in the form of trips. Uh, but there are also some sacrifice throws, you know, like we, we get uh, the crab claw takedown, the, the scissors takedown, which is frankly a favorite of mine. Uh, but we also have, you know, like a suplex variation. So all of those are in this rear takedown section. Um, all of them do begin in the rear, but t on a technical level, they feel like a bit of a grab bag. Uh, there's a, another chapter, somewhat brief, on the arm lock takedowns, which the authors note have a low percentage of working. And I am glad that they put that up front, because I remember flipping through the book and going like, yeah, that's not going to work, and, you know, against somebody that you're actually fighting who has a knowledge of submissions, they're not going to let you stretch out their arm like that. So... I appreciate that they did put that in there that, like, yeah, this probably isn't going to work as a full-on takedown against a knowledgeable opponent. However, they do note that it might cause hesitation for someone to engage with you in the clinch. And there are three different techniques shown in this very brief section. The last of the techniques sections is on defense. And I actually find this is a really valuable chapter. This is mostly concerning counters to single leg and double leg takedowns. And the counters to most of those that are shown are going to be throws like sumigayashi. You know, we also have things like sprawls. And I, I think there's one instance where he counters a double leg with like a, an inverted triangle. You know, so there's more than just the sacrifice throws, but the sacrifice throws are what gets most of the attention for these counters. Uh, the last actual chapter is on partner drills, and this is another section that I enjoy. These are partner conditioning drills, so not so much in the way of skill building or technique building, uh, but we're talking things like, you know, building strength and agility, like lifting your opponent from various awkward positions. Uh, there's drills for like jumping over your opponent's legs or hopping back and forth over their body for building again agility and explosiveness you know some general strength building exercises but with a partner so you know you're doing basically like a row while you got your partner in like a handshake grip you know or a bro shake grip you know with the thumbs linked as far as the pros go when it comes to no gi judo throws, I think this book does an excellent job of delivering. You know, I, I have Caro Parisian's no gi judo book, but that's more like judo for MMA, so there are some other aspects to it, you know, including groundwork and a little bit of striking. But I think, in terms of here are some judo throws without the utilization of the gi. I think that this might be the best book I have on that subject. Uh, I think that there are some good setups and some good combination throws in this book. Uh, in some cases, there are some excellent details as well. You know, the, the authors are clearly highly skilled. They both have experience as coaches. So I think that when they do well at their communication, they do it very well. You know, and give the reader some ideas about, okay, you need to wait until this specific, you know, your opponent needs to be here before you sweep his leg out. You know, stuff like that. As I mentioned, some of the highlights for me also included the chapter on partner conditioning and also the, the counters section. You know, I, I would say it focused a lot on the single leg takedown in that section, but that it happens to be a very common takedown. So... If you counter that and you're able to get on top, I think that's a great thing to have. So I do appreciate the that chapter in particular for those skills. Uh, as far as the cons go, 
one of the things that sort of stuck out to me is that none of the techniques are given a name. This is very rare for a very technique heavy book. I definitely think the book could have been improved. Like, I know enough about judo to go, okay, that's a kochigari, you know, that's an uchimata. I don't know how many readers would be able to know that. I think having the technique names there would be important for, you know, for helping you pair up with someone like, okay, this is what I want to work on today, or recognizing the name in a different environment. You know, if you do go to a judo class, you can't go, I want to work on what's on page 72. They don't know what's on page 72. <laughs> but they might know Kataguruma. They might know Kochigari. Finally, concerning some of the the moves on the ground, like the, the guard passes and the arm locks, that's another thing that I think just didn't get enough details. You know, they are being shown. They are given some attention. There's no real instruction on, on how to do these things. And, you know, how to do a, a straight arm bar, a Juji Gatame style arm lock, you know, the basic version of that can take up like a paragraph or so in most other instructional books. So I think they could have spent more time on that. Another thing, you know, I think I called it out a little bit up front. There's no striking in this. The closest is in some sequences you defend against a knee strike in the clinch before hooking the leg and completing a throw. But if this is meant to be clinch fighting for mixed martial arts, I think that not including clinch striking isn't great. I think not including a way to get into the clinch, you know, from a distance utilizing striking, I think that that is, is not making the book deliver on its title. Now, they will say up front in the introduction, it's very important to control the clinch, so we're going to work on controls and throws before we worry about striking. The thing is that the clinch in mixed martial arts is such a hybrid arena. You know, you get aspects of Muay Thai and wrestling and judo and sambo and dirty boxing and, you know... You can set up throws by throwing a knee to the body and getting the guy to put his hips back. You know, you can pummel for a better control position by elbowing the guy in the face on your way through. I think that would have improved the book. Although, again, as I said, they did up front make it very clear that they weren't going to be covering that. Uh, and finally, there are a few parts of the book that seem to be missing details or have some unclear details uh, very early on. You know, the, the instruction that is written, and these are very brief instructions, you know, you got pictures and you got a one sentence instruction on like what's going on in that picture. But the instruction is, you know, move your feet like a fencer. What does that mean? I mean, I got fencing books. <laughs> I have an idea what that means. But that makes it more confusing because the position is feet wound up and we're not a position that you would find in fencing. There are a few instances like that where I feel like the instructions are unclear. Or, for instance, um, one of the forward throws is very obviously a counter throw against Nuchi Mata. But you're not given that information. It's just, all right, you're in this clinch, and then you bump the guy with the, with your hip as his leg swings by you, and you're like, you're not mentioning that he's going for a throw. That's weird if the move is supposed to be a counter throw. I don't know. Part of me wonders if this sort of got rushed into print. I, I think maybe if they had taken a little bit more time, you know, put down a little bit more details, including the technique names, uh, the book would have been better. It's not bad. It is not a bad book. But there are just a few little details that I think could have made it much better. All right, as far as recommendations go, uh, if you come from a judo background and you want to transition into an environment that doesn't utilize the jacket, I think this might be a very good resource for that. You already know the moves, but this gives the context of, okay, we're not using a, a collar grip and a sleeve grip. Now we're using, you know, the back of the guy's neck and we're going under his armpit. 
Uh, I think if you do not have a judo background, but you want to include throws in a no-gi environment, and by that I mean if you are a no-gi submission grappler or even if you are an amateur-style wrestler, I think this book can provide a number of ideas for, you know, what throws to go through when you're in the clinch. And, again, that section on countering takedowns, I think that, that would be a, a big help. And I would expect probably would be sort of unexpected by most opponents who are only used to wrestling. Uh, for self-defense, I think it has some helpful information here and there. Again, if you are already familiar with judo throws, you know, if you, you train judo, traditional jiu-jitsu, sambo, something like that, that, you know, you can use these no-gi grips and go, okay, I can see how that can be used here. I think the sweeps when you got the guy against the cage, I think that's good. You know, you might wind up in, you know, against the wall in a street fight. Uh, for MMA, again, I think it could be supplementary. You know, I'll go ahead and say that I have better books on the clinch for MMA. But, you know, especially if you're an older guy and you did not grow up doing wrestling. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not a bundle of fast twitch muscles like somebody like George St. Pierre. Forcing the clinch and then feeling where the guy's balance is so you can get a throw or a foot sweep that's going to be easier than getting that conditioning and that speed for going for singles and doubles. So this, again, could be a good reference for that. And again, there there is cage stuff as well. So that's all I got for this week, and thank you for watching. If you would like to support the channel, if you have a book you would like to recommend that I do a review of, please consider donating to my coffee account. The link to that is going to be in the description. And again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.